I love doing the laundry. In the moment, at least. It's a time where I can mindlessly scroll through YouTube videos while folding some pants. A time where I can have fun doing my chores. A time where I can watch my favorite football team play on Sundays. Well, could have watched my favorite football team play on Sundays. Then the Raiders came along. But by the time I make it through the next episode of season six of Dance Moms, I look back on the laundry pile I've been working on simultaneously for the past 45 minutes. And it seems as if I've made as much progress on that shirt mountain as one would make trying to get along with their in-laws. None. What happened? Well, similar to many humans on this earth, I succumbed to the natural instinct for us to do two or more tasks at the same time, or multitask. But who can blame me? I mean, everybody has multitasked. But if everybody has multitasked, why is this something we need to talk about? Well, according to researchers at the University of Utah, only 2.5% of us are able to do two or more tasks at the same time and use less time than we would have than if we did each task individually. In short, we're not very good at multitasking. And this leads to an overall harm in this world. According to Matt Richtel, Pulitzer Prize winning reporter of the New York Times, US businesses lost over $650 billion due to employees multitasking in the workplace. But the harms do not stop there. Which leads me to my primary concern for today. Because we've convinced ourselves that multitasking is an efficient way for us to get our chores done, we've given ourselves access to harms. Harms that go beyond just money. Since this is not a black and white issue, let's tackle it one step at a time. First, we'll look at what causes us to multitask. Then we'll look at the harms that come out of it. And finally, we'll discover what we can do right now to prevent ourselves from succumbing to the tempting urge to multitask. Similar to problems in our own lives, multitasking stems from smaller issues that pile on top of each other. The first being that multitasking just seems logical. I mean, you're doing two tasks at the same time, so you should be using half the time, right? Well, okay, maybe a little bit more than half, but it should still be less than doing each task individually. Even though there are countless studies that reveal the inefficiency of multitasking, many of us still do it simply because of this logical relationship. Well, to be fair, logic can be subjective, so a more empirically backed explanation is the distractions. This is easily seen in our own lives. Every, fine, every time our phone makes the notification sound, our brains are trained like dogs to reach for it and read what's on the screen. But there's something curious about this phenomenon. It always seems to happen while we're working. Dr. Maria Koyuk reveals that up to 70 to 99% of employees feel distracted in the workplace, amounting to over 56 distractions per day. Why is that? Well, in short, work can be tedious. Psychologist Dr. Joanne Cantor reveals that whenever we have a tedious task we don't want to do, many of us look to other tasks, such as watching TV, to alleviate the suffering we'd experience from just doing the task at hand. BBC reporter Claudia Hammond adds on to this by explaining that many of us multitask simply because it makes the tedious task less boring. All of this is magnified by Jack C. Gansel in his article, Multitasking During Sex, where he reveals that engineers require a full 15 minutes to recover from a distraction. The problem? Engineers are distracted every 11 minutes, less time than it would take for them to fully recover. Distractions aren't the only cause for multitasking, but they are certainly the most significant. But what comes out of all of this? I mean, we've all seen the normal headlines like multitasking leads to more inefficiency, but the harms do not stop there. If you put yourself on the road down multitasking, you put yourself on a road that leads to dangerous, dangerous ends. The first being road-related deaths. Now, road-related deaths can be split into two subcategories. The first being texting and driving. I, unfortunately, can speak from personal experience on this one. The day I received my license, I considered myself to be the best driver in the world. But then I got my first notification, and my monkey hind brain impulsively reached for it and read what was on the screen. Once I was done, I put the phone down, and I looked up. And I wasn't dead, so I just continued checking my phone. And I know I'm not alone on this issue. An NIH study revealed that among teen drivers, over half of them are involved in at least one incident within just one year of receiving their license. And this leads to the second half of road-related deaths, because sometimes the pedestrian is involved. Senior reporter Nathan Bomey reveals that a large chunk of current road-related deaths are due to pedestrians negligently crossing the road while checking their devices at the same time. 
Speaking of negligence, the next harm that comes out of multitasking is parental negligence. There's no denying that raising a child is difficult. Senior national reporter Sarwat Nasir reveals that among parents that have a higher tendency to multitask, there's also a higher chance for them to burn out, to be less motivated to raise their children. This thus leads to parental negligence. However, these parents are able to recognize their harms in retrospect, which is why Nasir goes on to explain that many of these parents develop mental symptoms, such as PTSD, due to, quote, causing a near-death experience in their child's life due to their own negligence. And this leads to the final harm that comes out of multitasking. We develop mental symptoms that would otherwise be avoided if we did not multitask. According to Kep Kilo, lead researcher and neuroscientist of a study done by the University of Sussex, among adults that use two or more electronic devices at the same time, there's an increased gray matter within their brains. Gray matter that has been linked to increased cases of depression and anxiety. From losing a couple hours of your day, to developing mental symptoms that would otherwise be avoided, it, was, it is evident that there is something that needs to be done about the current state of multitasking. Luckily, the solutions are quite simple. First, make a checklist of everything you have to do throughout the day. As marketer Bianca Berra explains, a checklist provides a template for you to do each task individually. Additionally, when you check something off that list, your brain receives pleasure chemicals that would otherwise be received by distractions. Next, don't be afraid to say no. In a work culture where so many of us are focused on pleasing our bosses, many of us have taken on more tasks than we can handle, which causes us to do multiple at the same time to get them done on time, which is, you guessed it, multitasking. Now there is one overarching solution that should be quite obvious, and if not, let me make it clear. Just do one task at a time. Okay, back to the laundry. Truthfully, I haven't even started on it. I can't say when I will be. And yes, my mom has been nagging me about it for the past 45, I guess 53 minutes now. And since I've committed myself to, to doing each task individually, I'll be doing the laundry first and then watching Dance Moms. Abby Lee would want it that way. All in all, multitasking is a very dangerous road you can put yourself on. Luckily, it's also a very easy path to avoid. So whenever you're faced with a tempting urge to multitask, do as you would with your in-laws and just avoid it all together. Thank you.